Hello and welcome to Below the Title. I'm Robert. And I'm Taylor. And today we're talking 1917. So, 1917. The film. The film, not the year. Not the year. It's was, about the year. Well, it was it's it's set was in the year. Set in the year. 1917. About some events that happened in 1917. In the First World War. Yes. So, 1917 yes. is directed by Sam Mendes. Oh, yes, it is. Of uh, Skyfall. Mm-hmm. American Beauty. Yes. He's one of those uh, guys. Spectre. Well, let's... <laughs> We'll give him the first 10 minutes of Spectre. Yeah. Unless he was the fucking idiot who decided to have Sam Smith do a Bond song. Yeah, let's not go there. So it's in the First World War, Mm -hmm. and a couple of soldiers are tasked with getting a message across enemy territory Mm -hmm. to stop uh, an invasion from a regiment that's going to go up over the top the the following morning. Um, Oh, it's a big trap. Yeah, it's a trap, and they need to get a message. All the communication lines are down. The only way is to actually physically just run this message mm. across and uh, get it to to the generals in charge and stop the and stop uh, stop the stop invasion from the uh, from the attack from yeah, happening and save. save so let's just send lives. two people. Yep. To get this very important message. Yep. That's going to save thousands. Yeah. We're going to take one shot and send two people. Yep. And that's it. It's going to work. It's not even B team. I wonder if they thought of that back then. See, in this day and age, you always think, oh, I've got a hard drive with, like, footage on it. Oh, we've got to have at least two copies, mm. three copies. Yeah, where was their backup? Off-site backups, like, mm. back then. That was and, and nowadays, like, when important people, you know, you don't send everyone, you know, the same plane. If no. A band or something. Or- no, I have a client <laughs> that I've worked with, and they're not allowed to have more than two members of the executive team on the same flight for that very reason, <laughs> like... That's quite amusing. But needs to stay. Um, that was a minor niggle, don't get me wrong, because this is a really, really, really solid piece of filmmaking. This is... Yeah, it's two hours of very tense. Very vibes. tense. Like all the complaints of you know a lot of films, like the Marvel films being just a, a ride. This is kind of a this ride, a but ride. it's intentionally supposed to be that, and it's done really well. Yeah, it's like Gravity. Yeah. In that once the plot's moving it and just it doesn't take long for the plot to get moving, on but once it's on, it's on and it doesn't stop until you're at the very end. I wouldn't say it's as good as gravity. No, gravity's, uh, gravity's pretty gravity, awesome. Gravity. Yeah. The point of the 1917 review is to talk about how good gravity is. <laughs> yeah. It's a great film. Check it out. But in the meantime, we have this one. With um, not a lot of, like it had, it's got the two main guys in it. I mean, yeah, there's obviously quite a few people throughout it, but as far as key actors, we've got... I'm going to check the check the cheap board because they're not named Dean actors. Charles Chapman. Uh, Dean Charles Chapman, who I spent the first 20 minutes of this movie watching going, where do I know you? <laughs> I know you, I can't work that out. And and he's Tommen from Game of Thrones. I just needed the blonde mop the blonde, yeah. and the bottom lip that he used to normally have. And... George McKay, who I hadn't heard of before this, but you'll probably hear a lot more of him in the future. Yeah, he seems like someone who will. Unless he ends up being the go-to Disney prince actor. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He's Prince Charming from here on out. (laughs) Yeah. Till he's 35. Yeah. And then there's lots of cameos because... Yeah, there's a few other big names in here, but very, Mm. very Oh, Colin Firth and Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, and they kind of bookended um, on the story. And they come in and out of the story because it yeah. follows these two on their journey. So people are only in it for a couple of minutes at a time. Yeah, and we should point out it's it's filmed in a way to make it look like it's one shot. It's all moving mm-hmm. cameras, following the actors through trenches and mm. across no man's land. And yeah, it wasn't actually shot in one shot, but you know, no. it's been joined to make it. As near their I sit there looking for the joins. Yeah. Uh, oh, you can't help going. Is that a Oh, there Someone it is. Across, that a oh, anything that goes from <laughs> across, across the, the screen but covers the top of it, you're like, ah, oh, that wasn't there. That's the join. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is because they talk about it, they've got to get there before dawn. Yeah. And you knew at some point there was going to be some time compression because yeah. you can't do something, in, you know, the movie would be 17 hours long. Yeah. Um, and it's two. Yes. So there's going to be some time compression, a bit of cheating, but they pull it off in a way that works. Yeah. After seeing this film, Two hours of like steady cam. It wasn't all steady cam. It was cranes and things, but it looks like that steady cam thing. I went to the supermarket afterwards, and I was walking around, and everything in my vision just felt like I was viewing steady cam. Yeah, and um, it's yeah, it kind of. What did you put? Steady cam itis. Steady cam itis. <laughs> I always get actually well when I walk out of war movies. I always have to get used to the fact that nothing's exploding. Yeah. 
Så jeg lige sagde, at han var inden for... Snæl, snæl! Schustafel. Most of my German comes from Wolfenstein. That's no good thing. Hmm. Money, man! So Sam Mendes directed. Um, mm. Director of photography is Roger Deakins, who did Skyfall with yeah. Sam. Roger Deakins is a, is a master. Uh, he's, I mean, it's it worked in Skyfall at the end when the the, the Skyfall build, you know, the uh, oh yeah, the, when you the the big uh, mana yeah. is on fire and all the the moors are all, the fog and it's all illuminated with this beautiful orange glow and it just looks amazing mm. and similar thing in this. There's yeah, a yeah. nighttime scene in a. In a the bombed out city, stuff. that just looks amazing. With the flares going over the top and the f- building on fire, and it's just, it's just, yeah, it's some of the most amazing looking, yeah, looking stuff. And it, you know, he really knows how to use the the digital cameras to their mm. fullest. Yeah, and um, yeah, it just looks amazing. And he did win the Oscar for best cinematography Yay. just recently, so that was definitely worthy. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, the stuff when they had the ruins and the flares, which apparently they had flares on wires to do yeah, to, mm. to time all that, and yeah. it just looks. Yeah, that will look good in uh, 4K. HDR. Oh yeah, there'll be a 4K this one <laughs> popping up at some point. Yeah, I mean, another award mention is it won for visual effects recently at the Oscars. Yes, as well, yes, visual effects. It's kind of funny if you think about. The other more obviously visual effects films like Star Wars and mm. uh, Endgame. And, oh, uh, yeah, those ones that keep whole small Asian <laughs> countries busy with render farms and animators. <laughs> yeah. And uh, gets won by the movie with barely any really noticeable visual well, effects. I think that's why it won Which because is why it, it would have so, so much in it, but you don't notice it. Also, at all. it's nice to give a little fuck you, Star Wars. <laughs> that's what you get for the pulling the chewy shit. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. it's, yeah, it was good. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the best visual effects are the ones you don't notice. So, mm. um, the sound design, like, yeah, sound design and the score, like and the score. It, it was, yeah, similar to Gravity had a very mm. a, a score that just really added to that tense. Yeah, the when they were going through the bunker. Yes, yeah, that was so tense. Yeah, again, there's actually quite a lot of parallels to yeah how awesome Gravity was and how awesome. Yeah, this yeah, film no, is, no, it's, it's one of those ones that yeah. follows a small set of characters through yeah. a, 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 an incredible a really situation, tough situation. Yeah. Um, Continuously with them the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, it's a relentless two hours of... Though not in space. No. So if we're going to start nitpicking things, the German fighter pilot. Oh, yeah. Who... Okay. Spoilers. 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 Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to get the spoilers. But early on in the film, I knew one of them wasn't going to be in it all the way through it. Yeah. You just know this wasn't going to be a... And... It wasn't until that scene when they were going through the underground bunker. Yeah. Uh, my partner said at the time, he um, said, he was like, that's when I knew it was going to be Tom and that would get off. Because, yeah, there's this. Because sort of- it followed um, George McKay's character. Well, George is the one who gets buried and, and you think yeah. he's died in, in the yeah, mine. Yeah, but it's but too that's early. the bit where it's too early, but that's um, the moment. And then yeah. along comes the convenient plot. Excuse of having a fighter pilot crash in front of you and well, it's not really it's well, not a really fighter jet. Not, no, no, it's not uh, like a, a carrier. <laughs> Bang! Arnie comes out. What the other egg? But no, this brings in this, which gives us a way to off one of the characters. I did think when that happened and they, they pull him out, my first reaction was get his knife. No, oh, take first, his weapon away. The first then, thing I thought then, of was uh, George in the head. goes off to get some water or whatever, yeah. and then he's ah, oh, and it's like oh, he's been stabbed. He's been right. stabbed. Well, that that was, was a good. really well done. Did you notice how he got paler and paler? <laughs> yes, yeah, I did. Like yeah, the, that that's was... apparently because that's what happens when you bleed out. Oh, yeah, yeah, you go yeah. white. Um, I did notice that. In a that second, was yeah, really that was cool. well done. Um, but I, I did think at the same time, get his knife. Why are you trying to save a German? Kill. I like, oh, you run up and stab him while he's in the well, plane, or leave him there yeah. to burn. If they want to um, show that, okay, these are the good guys and they're human, and they're mm. not going to let him just burn to death, but you get him out and take his weapon. Oh, oh just yeah, not then a, run away, and then go get a bucket of water. <laughs> um, and that's when Mark Strong and his convenient <laughs> platoon guys just appear out of nowhere. Yeah, all of a sudden they're taking. They just on appear the side out of, of nowhere. This is the thing. The whole reason these two guys are by themselves and going through no man's land is there's no one out there. Yeah. That's why they're going where they're going yeah. is because there's no way to get to them, except for the platoon, the which has the all trucks the trucks. And, and the trucks are just going to show up and pick him up and take him for a five-minute drive that somehow transports him as far as he needs to yeah. be. They were relatively close at that point because mm. the bridge was out. They couldn't just drive across the bridge. 
So mm. he, he could jump across the bridge, but they had to go off another way. But, but yeah. I mean, the main thing was getting across no man's land and you know, across a lot of enemy territory mm. to get to that point. But yeah, it was funny. How I did think no one there, and then all of a sudden, and then when the camera moves back, they're, they're there's all two trucks and the soldiers pissing against the building. And hey, it's, all, it's like, whoa, <laughs> he didn't even hear them. Yeah, they just appeared. Yeah, and a convenient bus lift. And, and this movie also continues the long tradition of bad soldiers on screen. Although no one's as good as Aaron Johnson in Godzilla. He's, he's the worst <laughs> soldier of all time who just continues. They keep giving things to do and he keeps going, fuck that. And off he goes. He's, yeah, he's always And he just him. deserving his post. And in this one, along comes, he's got to reach in the morning. He's yep. got to be there. Yeah, he's got to get there to save all these thousands of people, and, and now that his buddy's off, he's got to get something to his brother. Well, and he gets the ricocheted bullet, which sort of knocks him out. Yeah. And so okay, that's fair enough. And he but wakes then he up. Gets a bit distracted, and, and then he gets distracted and talks to a French chick in a basement for a while. And then he <laughs> get, has to, he's to run, and he runs out there and leaves his gun behind. <laughs> yeah. And it was just like, dude, get your shit together, like really, move. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like people are counting on you. As it is, he. Almost doesn't get there in time. Um, well, yeah, the first the wave, first goes, wave over. goes over. But these are minor niggles. These are oh, only minor niggles that yeah. I didn't even pick up out of the time. It's not until afterwards you go, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of these these sort of films that are really good, they, they always have something. They always oh, have gotcha. something you can pick at. And, yeah, you are so in it with them and you're just following along in the trenches and then... I read somewhere they, they did like five miles of trenches. Yeah. They had to yeah measure it out exactly towards uh, t- to how long the dialogue well, was. Well, that's because you can imagine there were the obvious scenes where it's just wipe and it's a new scene. But yeah. those long shots where they're going through trenches and all that. Yeah, they had to work it all out. That's really impressive stuff. Yeah. I was thinking how you could probably never do yeah, something like that way. in Australia. Like in England, you can kind of dig up. I mean, there's Roman ruins and stuff. But in Australia, can you imagine them trying to dig up trenches like that. There'd be some earless lizard in the way or something and you'd never get anywhere. There'd be some moth they'd have to save in a paddock. Maybe it's not relevant. Maybe. But a little bit of bullshit never hurts. This is not saying anything. No, we're just waffling now. <laughs> we're just stumbling in the dark. Let's stop hiding my shirt this time. We've got our army greens. The key thing about this film is that it's it really does focus on the the technological or the spectacle of, of the film being this mm. this awesome, you know, one shot almost one shot film, and it's it does focus on that. Whereas, yeah, you know, we have problems with when they focus too much on visual effects and overproduction on on other films. But this, it's kind of the whole point of it, and, the, well, and it's done it's, really well. Those tools and are there's being so used much detail in it. Restraint. The yeah, the visual effects are not obvious, um, which is the best type of visual effects, and. And so it's good. <laughs> I'm a film critic. It's good. It's good. No, but I know what you mean. This is a film where you've got people who are at the top of their game mm. using the tools of the trade to the best of their abilities to yeah. create a very impressive piece of work. And, and tell, yeah, a story, a good story of honouring the memory of the people who did have to do this mm. in World War One. It's also cool to see a World War One movie because we always see World War Two. Are we going to get a sequel? 1918. 1918. It's actually one of those beautiful stories that needs nothing else. No. Just a one yeah, and it's done. Just, it's it's little, one of those films it is that there's no franchising opportunities to leverage momentum against a known IP. <laughs> we probably should wrap it up, eh? I didn't touch a drink bottle during this one, which is a lot I, to no, the I was, quality. I, I was, was in enthralled there. I was enthralled. the whole time. Um, I wasn't checking my watch or anything. I didn't look at the watch. No. Didn't know I was in there the whole time. Yeah. No, it's one I of those really films that it. will... Um, keep you yes it'll, it'll be glued. it's one that's going to end up on the shelf yeah it's going in the wall collection in 4k HDR no yeah. nice very solid film yeah oh it's a yeah gripping film solid very what solid would you rate it as far as numbers go I'd 8.5 oh easy or even more yeah, 9 8.7 oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 around there somewhere something like that yeah yeah because it, it's one of those ones yeah it's a film i can watch again like yeah dunkirk was an awesome film oh yeah uh, what a double solid back to back solid like much like this film very solid unlike this review <laughs> like this review this has been really <laughs> rambly so 1917 1917 solid very solid enjoy <laughs>